Hi everyone, this will be a quick presentation of Monarchs and Milkweeds 101 that's meant to cover some basic facts about monarch butterflies and about milkweeds, just to give folks who are interested in the citizen science project some background. There's a lot that we could say about these organisms, and this presentation is just meant to give you a few basic facts. So if you're interested, we'd encourage you to do your own research. There's lots of cool resources online, um, and they have a lot more information than what we're sharing here. So this is the monarch butterfly, and its scientific name is Danaeus plexippus. So here are the four parts of its life cycle. The egg, the larva or caterpillar, the pupa or chrysalis, and the adult butterfly. So butterflies lay eggs on milkweed plants, and the eggs are tiny and yellow. You can see one in the photo on the left. They're only about a millimeter tall, uh, or about 1 20th of an inch. Monarchs lay eggs singly or one at a time. They often, but of course not always, put them on the underside of milkweed leaves. And one butterfly can lay hundreds of eggs over her lifespan. Um, in the photo on the right, you can see a first instar or just hatched caterpillar. And here are some photos of monarch caterpillars at different stages eating milkweeds. So yeah, when they're first hatched, they're really tiny, but over the course of a couple of weeks, they'll grow to between one and two inches long, like the a fifth instar or final stage caterpillar that you see on the right. Like other insects, monarchs go through stages of growth or instars, um, and there are five of these during the larval phase, which you can see here. So the first four last a couple of days each, and then the fifth instar usually lasts a little bit longer. At the end of each instar, they molt or shed their skin and they emerge in their new form, which has the capacity to grow a little bit bigger than the last one as they continue to feed. At the end of the fifth instar, caterpillars usually leave the plant they're eating and find a place to pupate or become a chrysalis. They spin a small bed of silk and hang from it, head down in a J-shape, and then they shed their skin to become a chrysalis. And they'll stay in this stage for close to two weeks, during which time their tissues are being rearranged. Um, and then when the process is almost complete, the chrysalis will become transparent and you can actually see a butterfly inside waiting to come out. And here's a photo of a butterfly that just emerged. At first, their wings are still soft and crumpled, and before they can fly, they need to pump fluid through the wings to expand them and wait for them to harden. And the main task for adult butterflies in most generations is to mate and for the females to find places to lay their eggs. At this point, they no longer feed on milkweed leaves, and instead they drink nectar from flowers belonging to lots of different plant species. Monarchs lay their eggs only on milkweeds, which are plants in the genus Asclepius, and this is the only food that their caterpillars eat. Milkweeds are actually poisonous. They produce compounds called cardenolides. Monarchs are adapted to these and they actually store them up in their bodies and co-opt them as a defense against predators. Uh, so the bright colors they display work as a warning system and advertise that they're not good to eat. If you ever tear open a milkweed leaf, you'll see where it gets its name. Uh, most milkweeds are full of pressurized latex that dribbles out when the tissues are damaged. This makes them harder for insects to eat um, and it also serves to deliver some of the toxic compounds. There are lots of species of milkweed. Here on the left is one called butterflyweed, or Asclepius tuberosa, which is usually found in prairies and sandy areas. And on the right is swamp milkweed, or Asclepius incarnata, which is usually found in wet areas, like its name would suggest. Probably the most abundant milkweed species in the eastern U.S. is common milkweed, or Asclepius syriaca. And this is a species that we're working with in this citizen science project because, like its name suggests, it's more common, so monarchs end up using it a lot. Um, on the left, you can see what it looks like when it first comes up in the spring, and on the right, when the leaves have grown up a little bit bigger. And here's a little later when it's budding and then flowering. Milkweed produce uh, fruit that look like a pod. It's technically called a follicle that eventually splits open and releases seeds that are then carried by the wind. In the photo on the left, you can see some um, pods that are just starting to develop, and on the right, some that are mature and are getting ready to split open. So common milkweed grows in a variety of habitats, and you can find it in old abandoned crop fields, in pastures, in prairies, in roadsides, maybe even your backyard. So we've learned a little bit about monarchs and their life cycle uh, and their interactions with milkweed, but one of the other really remarkable things about monarchs is their migratory cycle. They actually spend each winter clustered together on fir trees in central Mexico, and then in the spring, they fly to the southern U.S., places like Texas, and they lay eggs to create the first new generation of the year. 
Once these have reached adulthood, they fly north to the Midwest and the Great Lakes, Northeast US and into Canada. And these butterflies lay eggs on common milkweed and produce a couple more generations here. And then in the fall, the last generation of butterflies to emerge flies all the way back to Mexico. Some of them stop in the Southern US and produce another generation, but many just fly straight all the way to Mexico. And then this cycle repeats each year. While we're focusing here on the eastern monarch population, there's also one in western North America that migrates back and forth from the California coast. There's also a non-migratory population in Florida and a couple other locations around the world. You've probably heard that eastern monarchs have declined over the past couple of decades, and we're still trying to figure out exactly why this is, but it's probably a combination of factors. So here are the three of the most important contributors. First, the areas they use for overwintering in Mexico face some logging pressure, and they also appear to be pretty strongly affected by climate change. Second, especially during the fall migration, butterflies aren't able to find enough nectar because there aren't enough flowers in the landscape. And third, uh, monarchs may not be able to find enough milkweed in their breeding range. While milkweed is relatively common, it's estimated that over the last couple of decades, we lost about 40% of the common milkweed stems in the US Midwest. And this occurred because of changes in agricultural practices. Um, common milkweed used to be really abundant in crop fields. In fact, it was weedy and generally considered to be a nuisance. But then starting in the late 1990s, farmers started using transgenic corn and soybeans that they could spray with broad spectrum herbicides. And this eliminated milkweed from corn and soy fields. There are now a number of uh, efforts underway to make floral resources and milkweeds more available to monarchs. Um, and our citizen science study is just part of this effort. We're testing if milkweeds could be managed strategically to make habitat more attractive and safer for monarchs. We hope this gave you some useful background information about monarchs and milkweeds. Um, next up is an introduction to the regrow milkweed for monarchs citizen science study.